the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel that we have heard today is the continuation of Jesus' conversation about the resurrection with the Sadducees. Sadducees asked him, teacher, a woman fulfilling the law was married seven times with seven brothers. Is there is resurrection? Whose wife will she be since they were all married with her? The scribe in today's gospel seems quite impressed with Jesus' answers to that question and consequently has a question of his own for Jesus. Teacher, what is the first of all commandments? We have to keep in mind that the scribes observe at least 613 commandments in time of Jesus. 613. So when he asked Jesus, teacher, what is the first commandment? This number was in his head. Interestingly, interestingly, the answer that Jesus gives has two important aspects. First of all, Jesus does not give him one commandment. He gives him two. You shall love your, the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. So pay attention in this. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. We cannot love God only with strength and soul and no mind. We cannot love him with mind and soul, but not the strength. Keep in mind the commandment. You shall love your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Secondly, Jesus said this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And this second commandment that Jesus quotes from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18, was not part of the 613 commandments <clears throat> that the scribe observed. Interestingly, it was not part. But Jesus quote this commandment from the book of Leviticus. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Nonetheless, Jesus includes by saying, there is no other commandment greater than this. Love God, love your neighbor. My dear brothers and sisters, this is where we find the beauty of this Sunday's teaching in the words of Jesus and in the words of the scribe. Jesus, that always reminds us to put God first in our life. In the name of God. I remember my parents, and maybe you had the same experience, always doing things in your life, saying first, in the name of God. You are going to your work, in the name of God. You prepare to eat your meal in the name of God. As you are preparing for a, a trip, in the name 
of God. Secondly, the beauty of this teaching is in the words of the scribe. This is much more important than all whole offerings and sacrifices. The teaching of Jesus always preserves human dignity. Nothing will be more important, neither the law or commandments, sacrifices, nor offerings than dignity of the human being. The ostentatious ceremonies or rites in our churches, beautiful flowers and decorations, colorful cloth, candles everywhere, incense, hymns of prayers, structured prayers, full temples are very beautiful to the eye and the ear. But these are just offering and sacrifices. Jesus wants something else. Jesus wants a spiritual conviction that everyone else is done as a result of love God and neighbor. Attending church every Sunday is important. But we are not called to be Christians once a week. We are called to be Christians every single day during the week. It is equally important to live a life in love of God and our neighbor 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The great danger that we face in our congregations, in our churches, in our ministries is to think that we are already within the kingdom of God and this is not true. Unfortunately, however, being close to the kingdom of God is not the same as being inside it. And Jesus said that to the scribe, you are not far from the kingdom of God. You are not far, but you are not in. You are not far of the kingdom of God. I want to finish with this story. A young man, a young man with a rather eccentric appearance arrived in a big city. Upon arrival, he walked towards the center of the town and went to the nearest, nearest church. He knocked the door of the rectory and he asked to speak to the pastor. When the pastor received him into the hall, the young man abruptly stood still. With curious expression, the pastor asked how, can, how he could help, to which the young man replied, it was just a kind of challenge to the pastor. The, yo, the youth man said, I come, I come from, from far away, and I want to stay in this town and join your church. However, and this is the challenge, first, I would like you to fully instruct me in all the faith that you profess while I remain in one foot. The full faith that you profess while I remain in one foot. Determining that the man was being outrageous, the pastor quickly showed him the exit. Subsequently, upon returning to the center of the city, the man went to another church. He went to the rectory again and again asked to speak to the pastor and repeat the story. I came from far away. I want to stay in, his, in this town and join your church. However, first I would like you to, that you fully entrust me in all the faith that you profess while I remain in one foot. Deciding that the young man was irrational this pastor also showed him 
the door. For third time, the young man repeated the same ritual and he went to another church and knocked the door of the rectory. This time, an elderly, tired pastor attended him. And the man repeated his request, saying, again, I come from far away, and I want to stay in this town, be part of your church. But first, I would like you to fully instruct me in all the faith that you profess while I'll remain in one foot. So the pastor looked at him with tired but wise eyes. He smiled and said, Love God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. This is our faith. The rest is just an extra. My dear brothers and sisters, let us make life our faith that is summarized, very, very summarized in these two commandments. Love God. Love your neighbor. And let us not stop loving one another. This is our faith. Let us not stop loving one another in the love of Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the word of the Nicene Creed that we can find in page number four in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, through God from through God, begotten not made with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, his worship and glorify. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the death and the life of the world to come. Amen. The praise of the people can be found on page four in your bulletin. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us all a reverence for the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sins against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We stand up for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you. In loving memory of the Venusar by Yokutu Macaulay, we have a World Cup offering and a special hymn as we continue praying for his eternal rest.
let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
Eucharistic prayer A is in your page number six in your bulletin, page number six. We offer this Eucharist in memory for the eternal rest of even Oyokutu Makauli. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the death and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this with the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctifies us also, 
that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to sing. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer on page number seven in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and signals of heart. Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. We are now past 11, so I don't want to take too much time. But we have some announcements in page number 11. Next, next Sunday, we have the healing service. So please come to the um, 10 a.m. service. It's going to be a kind of bilingual service. Latino congregation is going to be here with us at 10 a.m. We have hymns, prayers, laying of hands, anointing with the oil, holy water. It's a service of healing. After a year passing so many things, we ask from God to heal our heart, our spirit, and our body. This coming Sunday, 10 a.m. And Katuma is here, oh, Katuma is here with a very important announcement about um, Harvest Sunday and Place Campaign. Thank you, Katuma. Good morning, everyone. God is good. This is just to let you all know about our Harvest Sunday, um, our annual Pledge Sunday on November 14th. Again, this is an opportunity for all of us to um, give our pledges and for our um, church leader, Father Francisco, and our leaders to um, dedicate our pledges for the coming 2021. As the announcement is on page 14, please take a look at it. Um, use this opportunity to prayerfully consider your pledges. As you all know, we need your pledges and your support for our church to survive. So again, that would be November 14th at the, um, at the service, at all the services. Um, just to include on that Sunday, we will have our annual bake sale. We're, gonna, we're planning on having a food and bake sale for that Sunday. So we're asking you all to please and kindly consider donating food and um, baked goods, whatever it is that you're good at, you know how to make, you know how to bake, please donate it so we can um, sell again. All the contribution and donations given um, will benefit the church and our different missions and at the church. Uh, that's pretty much. Contact people for the bake sale would be myself, would be um, Jackie Skerritt, Pillar, and of course Tracy and Araceli from the 1 p.m. service. Again, please um, consider donating for the bake sale. Please consider, prayerfully consider your pledges for November um, 14th. We're planning on having a fun Sunday as always. We always try to do something creative and with the help of Father Francisco and other leaders, we're planning on having a fun Sunday for you all. So see you all November 14th. Thank you. And last but not least, the vote of thanks from um, Gloria and Sylvia. No, you are not giving. How about Sylvia? I have you here in the program. Come on and say something. Just say thanks. <laughs> Tell us a story about even. We have a few minutes. We have a few minutes. Don't speak too much. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> what, what I remember from even my memory from him is when I am walking with the communion in the pews, giving the communion to the people who can come through the rail, he never accepted me to bring the communion to them. He said, no, I will want to walk there. I'm going to walk to the rail, not, not bring me the communion to the pews. Go ahead, Rita. 
Yeah, Bruce. Okay, good morning, church. I'm not here to make any other speech. I've done what he wanted me to do at the funeral. He requested me to sit at his funeral. <laughs> I said, I've never seen a widow sitting. He said, well, you'll be the first one. Yeah, and I've done that already. All I want to say uh, is girls will give a vote of thanks. All I want to say is I'm now a widow. I'm now a widow. Whether I want to accept it or not. <laughs> he was not a perfect man. <laughs> nobody is perfect. I was not a per I'm not a perfect wife. But nobody is perfect except God. God is the only one that is perfect. But 24 years is not 24 days. It's not 24 minutes. <laughs> it's not 24 hours. <laughs> We've been through it all, both of us. And I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to help him, to take care of him, and he wanted to die in my arms, and he did. He did die in my arms. He did. Um, that was my job anyway. So all the children are thanking me for taking care of dad. No, that's my job. I, I took the vows right here for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, and I kept all those. All those. All those I kept. So this only cross, I would say, I was never unfaithful to him. I was never deceitful to him. I kept my vows. I kept my vows. And I am so, so proud. I am so proud of myself because of that. So all I would say is, he's gone. What I am crying and sad about, he did not want to die. I was the one who wanted to die 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago, he did not want to die. He wanted to live up to 105 or 102, but he had a cardiac arrest and he was gone. Just like that, he, he left me. He left me in this world, he left me. <laughs> So I can say, is God go with you, amen? God go with you. God go with you. You're right here. Today is your last day. You're exiting today. 40 days today, you're exiting. God go with you, yeah? God go. No, forget over. Come take me, please. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come and take me. I want to go. 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 Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for loving him. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for loving him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for loving him. Thank you. You want to say something? <coughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. I would like, on behalf of the Ujuktu Macaulay family, to thank the clergy, officers, and members of this church, Church of Our Savior, for having this memorial service in honor of our dad. I know dad might have feel a bit disappointed because his funeral was not held here, but all the same, the clergy were fully represented, members were fully represented at the funeral, and having this memorial in his honor, I'm sure he would be pleased after all. Dad was a keen church, churchman. He served this church back home, his church in Freetown, Samaria. He served there relentlessly in several positions. So serving in the church was kind of in Dad's DNA. You cannot take that away from him. He also tried to instill that in us. As we back home, we also serve in our various churches back home. His contribution to this church, I am sure, will not be forgotten. I know members and clergy will not forget him in a hurry. I mean, after 101 years, he was the father 
grandfather, uncle, and everything to members of this church. So I just want to say thank you. We feel honored that you have organized this service in his memory. So once again, I say thank you very much, clergy, officers, and members. And today being Dad's 40th day, as they say, it's his last day in this world. We pray that wherever he goes now, his soul will rest in peace. Thank you. I don't have much more to add. Um, I just want to um, inform you that after the service, given that today is the actual 40th day following the passing, we'll um, invite you downstairs to have a little bit of our traditional beans and um, whatever to mark that. Thank you. Let us prepare for the final blessing with the choral benediction. The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
go in the peace of Jesus and love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Hallelujah, hallelujah.